Funding for Governor's Perspectives with Kent Manahan has been provided by NJM Insurance Group, serving the insurance needs of residents and businesses for more than 100 years. Seton Hall University. Seton Hall School of Law. And by Connell Foley, LLP. I renew my promise to you, whether you voted for me or not, to work every single day of the next four years to keep moving us forward. And so it went, a win for Governor Murphy, but not decided until a day after Election Day, when he declared victory as the first New Jersey Democratic governor to win re-election since Governor Brendan Byrne 44 years ago. If you want to be governor of all of New Jersey, you must listen to all of New Jersey. And New Jersey, I hear you. Former Assemblyman Jack Cittarelli, who portrayed Murphy as a too liberal outsider who raised taxes, came within about 74,000 votes in a state where there are a million more registered Democrats than registered Republicans. And that was a vote margin smaller than the pollsters and the pundits actually predicted. Cittarelli finally conceded. There were those who thought I couldn't win. There were those who told me I wouldn't win. Fact is, we almost did win. Despite the Murphy win, New Jersey's democratically controlled legislature is in a bit of a shakeup, with the GOP gaining seats in this election and the Senate President Steve Sweeney's surprising loss of his election and his leadership post to an unknown Republican challenger. Many are now wondering what's ahead for New Jersey. With us now to talk about what's ahead for New Jersey, former governors Tom Kane, John Corzine, so good to have you here to get your here. views after this election. And both of you have run your fair share of elections in your time. This one, though, was a very close margin of victory, uh, closer than the pollsters and the pundits would have predicted. Not as close as your election in 1981, no. Governor Kane. No. That was, what, 1,797 yep. votes. Yep. The election was decided by, not until six weeks later, though. No, I still hold both records. <laughs> The closest election and the biggest margin of victory. Well, I think you're going to continue to hold that record, <laughs> even with this race. But yeah. it was a close race for yeah. Jack Cittarelli. Um, what are the takeaways in your view? Well, the first takeaway is Jack Cittarelli was a very good candidate. And nobody recognized that when he started running. But he turned out to be somebody that people in Jersey took to. And they got to know him better. The better they got to know him, the better they liked him. And so he was moving in ways that the pollsters didn't see. Uh, he went to every corner of the state, had an enormous amount of energy. He started early in the morning, he went all day, every day, seven days a week. And, and um, the result was he came very, very close. And my view is that he was creeping up. And if he had one more week, I think he would have made it. Uh, so he fell a week short, but he, he deserves all the credit in the world for a very, very good campaign. You may disagree with that, but let me ask you this. Well, I, 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 I wouldn't disagree that uh, a candidate that was supposedly down 15, 20 points in polls, mm -hmm. early polls, closing the gap, did something right, and he obviously ran a very good campaign. Uh, I do have a takeaway, though, that I would also like to emphasize. Um, I thought uh, factoid this week that uh, in Virginia and New Jersey, there have been 18 elections where a sitting president is of the same party as the uh, candidate in either one of those states, and only twice in those 18 races did somebody win was of the same party as the president. Phil Murphy did something that was really counter uh, trend to how history has fallen in off-off years elections. I know something about that <laughs> since I lost one of those um, first governor and Democratic governor in 44 years. But I think the, the, uh, the fact that we have a pretty uneasy environment because of COVID and all of the decisions that have to be made because of the uh, 
first term president's declining popularity. I think um, Bill Murphy did a pretty doggone good job of campaigning himself to get through some of the historical uh, patterns that have existed. Well, yeah, now yeah, he has four I, more I, years. I, I, I guess, yeah, I got elected enough. With the incumbent president of my own party, he was served for one year. Right. Uh, but uh, He I, was very popular in no, 19, not, not, not in those in, days. No, no, no. That's, 1984? That's a, no, 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 no not 1980. 81. 81. No, no, 81. I'm talking about in 84, though. In 84, he was very popular. Very popular. But not, not in 81 when, yeah. I, when I had that close election. He's, he's unpopular, actually, in the right. political exactly. people told me don't have him in. And I said, you crazy? An incumbent president was to come, and he would say no to him. So, so we had him in, and it was And you eked by. Helpful. And may maybe that was the deal. Maybe that was what turned the election for you. Yeah. But I want to get back to Governor Murphy, because as you indicated, the first Democratic governor to be reelected since Brendan Byrne 44 years ago. What are the implications for how he'll lead in a second term? Well, I, I think it's not just the governor. Governor has to work with the legislature. There are big changes in course in the legislature. The Senate president lost in a shocking, stunning uh, upset. And I think it is reflective uh, of some real unease in the electorate on a lot of issues. I think the most important one being is people are just damn tired of having to deal with COVID and all of the issues that that implies for how kids are educated, where they can go. Uh, there are a lot of people that haven't been able to return to the workforce. Uh, a lot of the service industries, leisure and hospitality um, are not operating in the same way that they have been able to. And so I think there's a lot of unease out there. Uh, and he's, you're and, absolutely right. And, th yeah. and that yeah. sets up a, um, uh, uh, an environment that I think makes it very difficult for anyone to do really well, and uh, incumbent tends to take a little bit of a hit on that. But he's, he's got some additional problems. I mean, uh, yes, it's, it certainly wasn't his fault that Biden sunk far below anybody, anybody including my expectations. So the, the president could yeah. have had an effect on this election. Oh, yes. Oh, but yes. also, Absolutely. did the voters, Governor, send Governor Murphy, a message in this election. Is his agenda too progressive for this state? Well, is, is there some soul I, searching that has to go on now? I think he should look at that. Uh, I, I don't think he agrees, but, <laughs> but, but, uh, but I think he should look at that because I think there is, I mean, the issues haven't changed over the years in New Jersey terribly much. The top issue was still taxes and the cost of living. Uh, a lot of people in this state completely can't afford to stay here. And they're always, running to catch up, and they leave. And in addition to that, some of the people who pay our largest taxes leave. And so we end up paying more taxes, and that wasn't addressed at all. And, and, and uh, it, it, to me, that's not only an issue for him, it's been an issue for years in, in the state of New Jersey. And we're you know, probably the most expensive state to live in the country right now, and we have the highest income tax rates in the country and the highest property taxes in the country. And, that's, we, we want to be best at a lot of things, but not taxes. <laughs> is there an I would agree with that. <laughs> is there an important message that the Democrats have to get out to the people of New Jersey, given the results of this election? Well, I, first of all, we have two different electorates. We have the, elector, uh, the people who vote in presidential elections. Uh, the fall off is very dramatic. I think we had 60% or 65% of the population eligible to vote voted in the presidential and it's something like 37 percent. 37 percent in this and gubernatorial so, election. Yeah. Um, and I know this all too well. I have scars from this. Uh, hmm. The fall off in the Democratic vote in 2009 was about a million two. Um, and I didn't think it was a million three this time. And so you really have to address a different set of circumstances, different uh, population when you go to campaign. And I think the message that that group is saying, I think is very much more in line with what Governor Kane is talking about. I think taxes are very high on the list of the agenda of people. Um, I have a great suggestion on that. 
have what is Bill that? Murphy and all of the people of New Jersey on both sides of the aisle get on a bus and go to Washington, tell them to do away with this uh, the cap on salt, salt on oh, state yeah. and local state taxes. state and local tax deduction. Um, one of That's the biggest. That's a $10,000 cap at this time. Right. Yeah. And the average property tax bill is $9,000, maybe $9,200 in the state. This is absolutely excruciating and it bumped up in the, the last three years and it needs to be addressed for I, the people of New Jersey dramatically. I, I think you're absolutely right. And I think if they don't address it, there's going to be a hell of a pain in the next election. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, absolutely. Because every, every congressman in New Jersey on both sides of the aisle ran to bring back salt. Right. Now they have a chance to do it. Democrats are in control, so they've got the responsibility. But every Democrat ran it's, to bring back salt. Well, let me ask you that you both just mentioned about high taxes in New Jersey. Um, ever since I've covered campaigns in New Jersey, the tax issue has always been an issue for New Jerseyans. And uh, Jack Cittarelli very effectively ran an ad in this campaign showing Governor Murphy talking just two years ago, in 2019, about the fact that if taxes are your issue, maybe New Jersey isn't the state for you. Why did Governor Murphy go there in that, in that message? Heavens knows. <laughs> he certainly shouldn't have, and he paid a price so for it. So that was a mistake. Oh, of course, yes, of course it was a mistake. And, 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 but I think, I think he isn't as sensitive to the tax issue as some governors have been. And I think he better get sensitive to it because it's, um, it hurts people. I mean, really, you, know, you pay that property tax bill in the state and it hurts. And, and, and then you see, again, you see with the income tax, you see people going out the door and I, I think you have got too. I mean, I've got an awful lot of friends who are not in New Jersey anymore because they just, their accountant showed them the difference if they left and went to South Carolina or Florida or somewhere and uh, they leave. And, and, and it's not only the rich folks. Uh, if you come where I live, which is about 35, 40 minutes from the Delaware River, uh, you look around the local post office and the uh, drugstore and so on, the cars parked outside have Pennsylvania license plates. These people have found out they can save all those taxes by living in Pennsylvania. And it's not just the rich. Well, I mean, New Jersey the, doesn't exactly have a business-friendly reputation either. And, and the, the tax situation, is there a need for real tax reform? Rebates bring relief. But real tax reform has been talked about for eons in New Jersey. There is a fundamental issue that drives property taxes that mm. can be addressed, and almost every governor has talked about it. Some of us have tried to do things to mm -hmm. incentivize, but we have 21 counties, 566 municipalities, yeah. I don't know. Everybody how. likes their independence. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we have more fire trucks in Bergen County than they have in New York City. And, <laughs> you know, it's, it needs to be addressed at a basic causal root. And that's not a Republican or Democratic issue. It is just common sense. Economies of scale make a lot of sense. And when you don't have them, you, yeah, you end up building them up. Yeah. We also can do things for the future about pensions, but we did sign contracts that yeah. get us into a situation where we um, need pension reform for the future, but you did promise people certain in things in the past and you have obligations to live up to. So I, I, there, there are lots of issues, but I think maybe addressing the consolidation of how we deliver services in this state is the most important step that could be taken to actually do something about pushing down on property taxes. Um, I think that there are, uh, there are philosophical differences about uh, how progressive the tax system should be and whether um, we should have some redistribution element, particularly as it relates to education and health care, some of the social services. And that, I think, um, is, a, is a place where uh, political leaders need to debate and come to those kinds of conclusions. We have those debates almost every four years. But it's important that we have all of our children educated 
on a superb basis as New Jersey does generally. Yeah, New Jersey spends a lot of money in education. We now are very close to number one out of the way in Massachusetts area. The only difference is Massachusetts spends one third less and has just as good education as we do. So we should examine that too. Well, but that's some of that, Tom, is the same thing that I just talked about. We have mm. a much more fragmented educational environment than most states, so we have more superintendents and more mm. infrastructure to support the operation of the, uh, the school system. There, there are other But we issues. should address it. You know, a number of years ago, uh, very little noted, the cost of education as composed to administration, got less. We're paying much more for administration and education now than we are paying for teaching. Uh, and, and that really shouldn't be. No. So <laughs> it, it, and, and, and people a real examination or re-examination yeah. of this issue, yeah. maybe with focus groups around the state, um, mm -hmm. maybe not the pollsters this time driving the issues <laughs> in New Jersey, but focus groups out and about yeah. talking to people and what they think can help to bring back some of the reform. Uh, that you're talking about. I want to switch gears to Steve Sweeney, the Senate president. Mm -hmm. A big surprise in this election cycle. He lost his seat. He lost his Senate presidency. He's the longest serving Senate president in New Jersey state history. He lost to a Republican unknown candidate who spent uh, something in the area of about $1,500 and won this election. What happened? What are your thoughts on that race? Well, Sil Sweeney, Sil Sweeney always ran way ahead of his party in that, in that district. That district has been trending more Republican over the years. And I think what happened when you were talking about who votes in this election caught up in that district too, and he was just caught unawares. It's a, he, was a, he was a point of stability in the state. And he did a lot of good things for the state. He really did, and I think he was a good balance occasion to the governor, so I, I, I'm sorry to see him lose. Well, it's uh, interesting you say that because I took time to talk to Democrats and Republicans in that part of the state about this race in particular, and he gets praise from both sides of the aisle for what he did for that part of, of South Jersey. This is, in my view, hmm. a protest vote about the circumstances we're living in either a protest um, about how we've handled COVID in that part of the state, some of the uh, aggressive steps, positive steps in my view that the governor took uh, were not as uh, welcomed as they were in other parts of the state. Um, the popularity of Democrats, as Governor Kane has talked about, has deteriorated in southern New Jersey quite substantially over the last decade. It's it's really, we've got, unfortunately, a, a divide between north and south, and I think it shows up in that vote. And I think he was an easy place for people to express that. And, um, and I don't think it had a whole lot to do with he, him, or his performance, I think it is, I'm sending you a passionate statement that I don't like the way things are. Right well, generally now. speaking, this area of the state has become more Republican, and perhaps this was a reflection of that, and, and the Democrats there just thought these people would show up and underestimated the, the challenger and who would show up at the polls. Huh. But, it, but It's I, not only I, Republican, though. It's more conservative. You know, and I think, I, I think when you have a governor who is one of the most liberal governors in the country, an area that's going more conservative, go like this. So. I, I want to ask you though, is this um, uh, 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 an indication of how things might look for next year's congressional races? I mean, you look at New Jersey, only two gubernatorial elections in, in the country this year, Virginia and New Jersey, and then with our full legislature up, and Steve Sweeney, an indication of he lost this race. What does that, what does that indicate for the congressional races to come next year? Well, if and, history and New is Jersey's any, congressional delegation. <laughs> if history is any guide, uh, midterm elections after a president is elected are not very welcoming, just as gubernatorial candidates are not uh, uh, of the same party as a recently elected president, generally, not Tom Kane, of course, <laughs> but generally have not been... Uh, 
as welcoming as uh, Democrats are going to want in uh, the upcoming midterms. Um, so there's a hill to climb. And I think the hill is to make sure that if you are a Democrat, if you're rooting for Democrats, and I am, um, then you have to get out the vote as if it were a presidential election. You really have to work in a way that I don't think we've always brought uh, the the elbow and the shoulder to the to the uh, the grist mill. How do you look at it, Governor Kane? Two Republicans in the delegation of twelve, the other ten Democrats. Like I think this was a, this was a shot across the bow this election, and I think unless things change. And I think maybe in Washington and in Trenton. I mean, I think if the governor starts listening a little more, New Jersey is not a liberal state. It's always been sort of a middle-of-the-road state. And this is the most liberal governor in the country right now, and proud of, proud of it. I don't disagree with him on everything, but some, some he's a little farther than a lot of us like. And I think people feel that. At the same time, that Joe Biden and the disappearing Camilla Harris uh, are not very popular either. And that's a, that's a very difficult combination for the Democrats to overcome. So whether or not it's the Democrats hope if the president gets his big package through and that kind of thing, whether things will change, I don't know. I doubt it. I doubt it. I think people, it's hard these days. I think people, people are fed up with what's going on. They want change. And if you're in, they want you out. And, and, and that's sort of across the board, I think, <laughs> right now. And, so I, 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 and I also think the public likes uh, divided government. Yeah. They like the checks and balances okay. that come from. Uh, That's usually the case in New Jersey, if, if we're a bellwether yeah. at all. Governors, in the time we have remaining in this interview, I'd like to talk about this series, the Governor's Perspective series. Now 10 years in the making on NJPBS, we've talked about so many subjects over the years from affordable housing to Superfund sites and primary and general elections and the list goes on and on. Um, all with you and the other former governor's help in helping the people of New Jersey understand just how government works and what's at stake. I'd just like to ask you your thoughts very briefly. Governor Kane, in your participation in this series, what has it meant to you? Well, first of all, I enjoy doing it. And if you've been around the track, as we've both been around the track, you know, you, you've learned some things. And you like to pass that on to people. And this is a wonderful way to do it. Uh, because you ask very articulate questions. They're usually an issue of the day. And we're able to say, based on our experience and our experience as governor, uh, that this is the way we would handle it. Sometimes it agrees with the present governor, sometimes it doesn't. But I think it's not a bad perspective to get out to people, and uh, thank you for doing it. Governor Corzine. I think Tom really hit the high points. I think the experience that people have and sat in the chair and know that the difficulties of mm -hmm. getting the legislature to align and make sure that the public understands what you're doing in a state that has uh, a difficult media environment to be able to communicate to the state. I think it's important that you get people who have had experience in trying to communicate uh, to get out and, and discuss the issues. And I think one of the great things that I've noticed, and we've done this a couple of times, you know, everything in politics doesn't need to be a food fight. <laughs> it, it is actually reasonable to have differences of opinion, but try to find out where those are and try to ameliorate them. And if people see former governors doing that, I think that helps set a pattern that maybe others will follow. Well, I just want to say it's been my pleasure. And um, you have always shown respect for the public process, and people have learned from that. And we all appreciate your participation. Thank you, Governor Kane, Governor Corzine. Thank you. Thank and thank you, now for our audience, a look back. There's only one that everybody agrees on. Early childhood education, all the education research is so on now for the last 20 years. That can improve the outcome. 
and nobody disagrees. So shame on us for not doing it. One of the things, of course, we look at and have been looking at is, is when the public funds particular research, they should be able to see it. It's a legislative issue. The legislator responded to it by creating this agency that's supposed to actually implement the system that they put in place. The agency has not worked very well. In the polling data, all of New Jersey almost says, we have no problem with that because almost all of them aren't millionaires. So it's an interesting dynamic here. As a consequence, I think the values that uh, Governor Murphy has expressed through that budget, and all budgets do express priorities and values, um, is designed to try to meet those needs. How concerned are you? How concerned should we be? These should be petty disorderly persons violations. They should not be criminal offenses. I mean, you don't want to tie up courts for, the, for this kind of issue if you, if you are not going to legalize it. Atlantic City has great potential, great potential. Funding for Governor's Perspectives with Kent Manahan has been provided by NJM Insurance Group, serving the insurance needs of residents and businesses for more than 100 years. Seton Hall University. Seton Hall School of Law and by Connell Foley, LLP.